Welcome to Create Wealth Through Franchising. I'm your host, Kim Daly. Whether you're a CEO, a military vet, a real estate investor, or simply in career transition and ready to take ownership of your future, with each episode, you're going to learn valuable insights and hear inspiring stories from within the franchise industry. On that note, my guest stories are their own. And as a franchise consultant, I do not make personal brand endorsements or earnings claims, but I do educate, motivate, and inspire dreams. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to Kim Daly TV and Create Wealth Through Franchising Podcast. My name is Kim Daly and I'm your host. And today in my studio, I have a brand new friend who I'm so excited to introduce to you. His name is Chris Stonis. Chris, welcome to my studio. Thank you for having me, Kim. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) Okay, so guys, guys and gals listening, this is a really great story about how franchising is more than business. It's very relational. So Chris and I met uh, this past July in 2023 at a best practice session at a franchise convention. And before we started getting into like the nitty gritty of best practices, we started like the the round table with, you know, like, tell us something about yourself, right? I think of something about your perfect day, what might you be doing? And so I happened to mention that I love music, any kind of live music I'm in from a concert to a Broadway show to just, you know, a coffee shop with a guitarist singing a song, right? Mm -hmm. I love live music. And so after that, Chris, you know, found me and he told me something super interesting about his past that might have never come up had that little conversation about Kim loving live music come up. But it's the very essence of how he started a company that he now is franchising in Canada, bringing to the U.S., through Kim Daly and Fran Choice. So Chris, meet me right there, pick up your All side right. of the story and tell me, tell the audience a little bit about who you are and the company that you are bringing to market as a franchise. Well, that was uh, that was an amazing summary of, of what I believe to be true across all aspects of life, that relationships are the foundational element that allow us to, you know, flourish or, or grow in whatever path we choose. And uh, it, it just so happened that we were, uh, I, I saw the spark in you, to be honest, when you, when they, you mentioned music, it was like, oh, this person not only goes to concerts, they love going to concerts. And so I found that really interesting and I wanted to follow up with my backstory. So I'm the CEO and founder of Elite Window Cleaning here in Canada and Sparkle Squad uh, window cleaning in the United States this coming September. And how I got into the industry was actually through the music industry. I, since as long as I can remember, was obsessed with capturing the moment of a live performance. And I'm a musician, but was never great at it. And I never filled my bucket the way that capturing a live performance did. So at a really young, young age, I became obsessed with recording music and recording anyone that would let let me do so. And through my formative years of deciding what I was going to be, you know, when I grew up, I guess, through my teens and early 20s, I followed this path based on a sheer passion. I just loved recording music. And what that passion led me to was to the very top of the mountain. I worked in the best studio in Canada, the warehouse studio for Brian Adams, and arguably one of the best in the world. (laughs) He mentions Brian Adams. Here he is representing a window (laughs) franchise. He says, I'm working in the Brian Adams studio, and Kim's like, my mouth is on the floor, and I'm like, I'm sitting next to royalty. (laughs) Sorry, continue. (laughs) No, no, that's, that's how I felt, and that's how the dream presented itself to me was this is going to be where I can take you know my skill set and my passion but the interesting part was once I got to the top of the mountain you don't think about what it's going to be like at the top while you're climbing and I was working on things to the extent of the Michael Buble Christmas album or you know working with ACDC or Shakira these bands that I had spent my whole life just wondering what it would be like to be in the room. Oh, and me too, and, me too. <laughs> <laughs> wondering what it's like to be on stage as them. 
And, and for me in that moment, it was really, really hard because what I found was my passion was actually in the climb and it wasn't in the, in the accomplishment of being there. And I realized that in my life, my girlfriend and now wife and mother of my children, we wouldn't be able to have a normal life if I stayed in that industry. And I just, everything kind of came to a head and I realized that I had to walk away from my dream. Wow. And so this was in 2006. I let Brian know that I was going to be taking my career in a different direction. No clue what you that direction was. Mr. Adams to the rest of the <laughs> yeah, Mr. Adams. Except <laughs> <laughs> <Saturday> at 69. <laughs> I, uh, I had no clue what direction it would be. And so I decided to walk home through downtown Vancouver. And I was walking up uh, Granville Street in Vancouver and saw a high-rise window cleaner washing a building. And I thought, wow, that's kind of the exact opposite of being in a dark recording studio. Maybe I'll ask this guy what it's all about. And I waited for him to get to the ground. And when he did, oh, he was a little bit concerned as to what I was waiting for. But I said, how do I, how do I get a job doing what you do? And he hired me on the spot. And I became a window cleaner that day, the very day I left the life track that I'd been on as long as I could can remember. And I found a freedom in it. I found the instant gratification. I, I saw opportunity everywhere I looked. Our world's really made of glass. And the industry of cleaning that glass just seemed so expansive to me that I decided that I would see what happened if I stayed on that track. Hey, Daily Coach fans, if you're loving this episode, please do me a quick favor and leave me a five-star rating and a short review. Your feedback fuels my growth and rankings and shows others that this podcast is valuable. Now, back to the show. Let's go back up a little bit, okay? Because people are like following this. Like, really? So this is really a true story because this is what I was saying, guys, when I was listening yeah. to him. Like, okay, so you follow your passion. And I think there's so much wisdom in what you said about how the passion is in the climb. Mm -hmm. Once you're standing on the mountain, it's like life is about growth. So like, yep. what's next? And then you get there and to realize after all of that, you're chasing your dream, you're tra chasing your passion. It's not providing the quality of life that you now want for your family. You want to be available during the day. And, yeah. you know, I equate it to sometimes I say, you know, God, I just wish I dug ditches for a living, right? Like yeah. the simplicity <laughs> of like right. having a job that when it's done, it's done. You don't take it home with you. Yep. You know, it's, it's simple. It's repeatable. It's not rocket science. And I, when I heard your story, like I equated that conversation I have with myself a lot to that like moment, this lightning struck you and you were like something simple, something necessary, something, but like, mm -hmm. it's not rocket science. Exactly. And so you could get a job that day doing it without any skill. And then what happened? Well, what happened was when I when I got into the industry, I initially, you know, franchising wasn't on my radar. All I wanted to do was change and I wanted to be climbing again. And when I got into the industry, I realized that not only was the opportunity expansive and there's just glass everywhere, but the industry hadn't had a meaningful update since the squeegee was invented or patented. <laughs> In 1936, but it was a place to climb. It was a place where I could go, okay, how do I take this industry and I tear it down and I can start to think things through and do something different and, and create, become a creative in a very, very uncreative space. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we akin it to, we put people on the moon before we put wheels on a suitcase. And the reason is, is because it was just too obvious to put wheels on the suitcase. So we went for a bigger goal. And so I tried to look at this industry and see where we could apply technology and where we could use all these amazing modern luxuries that we have to create something new in the window cleaning industry. And, you know, that's what the last 12 years of my life has been just constantly iterating. And once we hit that inflection point where our systems and processes were completely different than that of the entire industry, everything just opened up. It was it was incredible. On the front end, we were using technology to deliver. On the back end, we built an Amazon-like purchasing area where people could purchase window cleaning from their bed because that's where I buy my dog food because that's how we shop. And it was just 
this climb of looking at opportunities inside this business is it's just been it's been tremendous and it in franchising seemed to me like the way to take it to the world as as a sound engineer then window cleaner then entrepreneur then franchisor it was just it was it was just such a dream to have that blank canvas to to create something amazing it's such a fun story it's so unexpected like guys if you're listening to this and you're like what am i really hearing what i'm hearing this this is what i'm doing sitting next to this man at this uh, best practice session right so i'm like and i said we're to him right then we have to record this story <laughs> and here we are today making another you know kim daly dream come true so thank you for joining me chris oh, so, so okay so you you launched this business now, let's go back to your comment about the passion is in the climb. So you've been climbing for 12 years now. Are you passionate about what you're doing, even though it's not music? I am so beyond passionate. It was uh, so the first passion was in the entrepreneur and the curiosity, figuring out systems that could replace something conventional. And then franchising came in. And that just as a social person, that really became franchising is my life's work. I really love what I do. I love supporting our owners. I love everything about lifting someone up and helping them in the darkest parts of that terrifying entrepreneurial journey. I just, there's something about the relationship and that social, like I said at the top, like being open to other, to total strangers and helping them and just letting that guide you. It, it, it's there's nothing else like it there's nothing like franchising that i have ever experienced when it comes to like dipping into my passion pool that is everything for me so it it worked out it's so amazing and what's amazing is that you're teaching you're giving other people the opportunity to climb and you are their sherpa (laughs) now you're like not you know you're you've done the climb but now you're helping other people climb and so where's the mountaintop there you know there probably isn't one because you can keep reaching new levels and new heights together you conquer canada now the next mountain you're looking at is the united states right exactly exactly this september we are we are formally launching in the united states and we just we can't be more excited to be at the base of a new mountain everyone knows us up here so let's go somewhere and start again and meet amazing people and just bring this new way of doing things let's bring wheeled suitcases to every entrepreneur in the united states so yeah we're incredibly excited to be at the bottom of a new mountain it's an amazing analogy i love it it's so it's like you're right it's so obvious why didn't we why did we carry suitcases for so long before there were wheels right we put a man on the moon and we're carrying our physical suitcase onto the onto the the astronauts are carrying the suitcase on like that's hilarious okay so so the characteristics let's just talk a little bit about the franchise model for anybody who's listening Mm. who might be like okay so i'm an executive i'm career transition or like why would I think about window cleaning so let's set up what was obvious to you in that moment when you looked up you walked out of Mr. Brian Adams studio (laughs) and you look up and you see a window cleaner what was obvious to you about the characteristics of this job or this business that now you're passing on what was what was abundantly clear right out of the gates was that there was an acute need it, there's just there's more glass than can be cleaned uh, in North America, and so that was kind of my first way. But then I realized there's people like me looking for a place that don't quite fit in, or they're in a transitionary period. So I knew that there was a workforce available, and I knew that if I could build systems around the business, I could find owners that could be empire builders and not buy themselves a job. That is our biggest, you know kind of angle on this is the workforce really does take care of itself in this industry because it's a clean job. It's outside. It's not, you know, digging ditches, but it's also not, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's some manual labor, but not completely when you, when you add the technology, we don't use lifts or ladders. Everything's done from the ground with these carbon fiber poles that reach up to six stories. So we're able to hire based on kind of customer service aptitude and the type of person who just wants a good job to be outside. And so when I realized the labor pool was going to be deep, I knew I needed to build a model around 
an owner coming in, like you said, that that person that's exiting a, a first career and transitioning into something new. And what I would say in the window cleaning space is it is so wide open and it is so fragmented that you can build a team and become market dominant inside like a really short time frame because there just is not a market dominant player. And that's kind of been our angle looking for owners who want to build empires inside their market. And, you know, our owners love the model. We have an amazing culture of people here. We're, uh, we're really, really blessed to, to work with the people that we do. So we're going to come back to culture in a minute. But so the competition pool really is what, like, like mom and pops who are probably walking in, yeah, maybe showing up mm-hmm. after, you know, maybe not showing up. I mean, do they have the technology to even take a credit card upon payment like i'm guessing it's pretty fragmented and like all over the place very very fragmented they the the things that mom pause i'll never knock another window cleaner because they have they have the hardest job there's no uh gray area when you're washing windows it's perfect or it's dirty and so (laughs) but what mom and pause but what about chris when you clean it and then you walk away and the sun (laughs) hits it and you're like oh I thought it was clean. <laughs> you got to call a window cleaner. <laughs> the uh, the montage, they, um, they don't have the systems and they don't have the scalability to reach the market potential. So that's why you find a market, you know, may only have a 200,000 population, but there's eight window cleaning companies, but they're all s- taking little tiny segments of this market and just having like a really insular customer base and they don't do a ton of marketing. So where we come in is we come in with a systems approach and and we do you know, a ton of air support for marketing and get our owners in that position where they can get their elbows out and become market dominant really quick. And then the same curiosity on the on the back end of the business, you know, who wants to pick up the phone and call for a service these days? Like if you can buy it online, you're probably going to buy it online or, you know, having a call center that picks up the call on the first ring every time where if you call them on PA, you may leave a voicemail, you may not hear back for three or four days. So <laughs> it's where they can't compete is is on the strategy point. That's like really where our franchise system shines when we go into new markets is we understand how to go from day one, you know, one truck, a couple employees to market dominant, you know, five, 10 trucks in a really short period of time and keep that, keep that entrepreneur franchise owner supported all the way through. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs and turns and lefts and rights on that road. And because we come to this industry from the inside out. We built a multi-million dollar window cleaning business before we franchised. We've walked that path. So all we Sherpa, like I'm going to take that. That was, that's the perfect analogy for what we do. You know, we Sherpa people up the mountain. So yeah. It's so good. So let's go back to culture. So if you're building teams and you're not out cleaning windows yourself, then culture in your, in your company is going to be a really big deal. So as you're mm-hmm. screening potential candidates to become franchisees, are you looking for a certain skill set or personality type that you believe will excel in this role with the type of labor pool that you'll be attracting? Yeah, we definitely are. So we definitely have a have a really intense screening process that we believe I, you know, you're going to have someone as a neighbor, you want them to go through as rigorous a screening process as you do. And it, it focuses a lot around you know, commu- we need good communicators in this business. You need to be an empire builder. That's one thing that's a non-negotiable for us because the opportunity is just way too large to bring somebody in that wants a small business. So we, we find these empire builders and then it's, can they communicate? Are they enthusiastic? You know, do they respect the process? Do they respect, you know, our development people? And when you find that that person, it's amazing because that type of person gets the business already. Like it's, it's our, our development uh, team always say like some people who are the perfect fit already get what we're trying to do here. And it's amazing that, you know, those things are led by those communicators, those people who seek challenge, who are enthusiastic. So that's kind of our avatar is somebody who wants to build a big business and have fun doing it. Hey, Daily Coach fans, if you're ready to begin your own journey to find the perfect franchise, please email me right now at inquire at kimdaily.tv. My services are totally free for you. That's inquire at kimdaily.tv. Now back to the show. 
there's a lot of really well educated investors out there looking for the boring business. I right. I would say that window cleaning is right up there with boring business. But look how passionate this founder is about boring business, right? He went right. from the super passionate, sexy Mr. Brian Adams studio to you know, but it's long term sustainable. It's recession resistant. Mm-hmm. Glass is always going to be dirty. I mean, you said yeah. so many great things. There's glass everywhere from our homes to our businesses, right? So yeah. it's B2B and B2C. And you mentioned some other characteristics I loved in there about call center, about technology. I can order a window cleaning like my kids order DoorDash. <laughs> this is amazing. So again, these are the these things seem so duh, right? just like wheels on a suitcase. But like, why wasn't anybody doing it before this? So I mean, good for you. It's Thanks. such a fantastic story. And if you're listening to this and you haven't like latched on to Chris's like heart and personality, like I did after like 10 minutes of sitting next to him at this round table, like then this conversation is not for you because this guy is all heart, baby. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm talking Jerry Maguire. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, yeah, Thank I really you like much. it. And I think that we're going to do a bang up job with Sparkle Squad when we have our little hands on it here at Fran Choice mm-hmm. because we love boring business. I'm the queen of service. I love low investment, high margin, you know, throw in reoccurring revenue. And that's sort of the trifecta for Kim Daly. So when people ask me, you know, what's your favorite franchise? I don't really have a favorite franchise. I have favorite characteristics and those are them, right? Yeah. So those investors out there who love boring business, you know, lean in like this could be a new option for us. So when going back to that owner role, an empire builder, is this a full-time, like in the beginning, do you want a full-time operator or is this something somebody could do who owns a dental practice or who's a, you know, a W-2 employee, but has, you know, 20 hours a week or so to put into their own future? Oh, certainly. So I think what we, what we look for is above everything else is attainment to what their goals are. And we know that somebody coming in is, is going to need either a level of commitment to lead their team and to grow their business, or they're going to need a general manager with attainment. So we certainly have semi-absentee operations and semi-absentee opportunities. And what we, what we coach, to is just find that general manager who shares the vision and wants to be a part of growing something huge and then bring them in along for the ride. So we de- we definitely, you know, fit both flavors. Um, and because I, I think great people and great uh, entrepreneurs come in all flavors. So we try to really accommodate, you know, we try to meet the franchise candidate where they're at and let them know, you know, this is the path to success within this brand. And so, yeah, certainly we see the GM model work fantastic. One of our one of our owners up here in Canada put in a GM about a year ago and they've already purchased, bought out a neighboring owner because their GM is just such a, a rock star. Yeah. So, yeah, That's right. Amazing. So, I mean, and again, talking about, you know, the the joy is in the climb and, and so many people i just want to say this it's not the what i want to ask you next but just as a tangent so many people are looking for like the comfort of arriving right that's not really what what makes us feel alive right the alive part is when you're scared out of your mind and it doesn't really feel good but you know you're on the path to something good right yeah. and you're working it out and you're growing and you're developing skill like muscle like going to the gym right? We don't like the process, but we like the muscle, right? So the same thing in owning a business. And so I, you know, I've made shorts on this very comment that if you're looking for comfort, don't start a business. If you're looking for growth, then you start a business and the growth will take you to comfort that then you're going to find is boring. It's not even why you wanted to do this, right? Uh, Now, I'm being a little facetious because building something that creates residual income for you is, is the goal for all of us. So, What I wanted to say as I was listening to you is I kind of want to throw a little shout out to my listeners to say, who dares be first? (laughs) 
<laughs> because you're coming down from yeah. Canada and the whole United States is open. So as you're managing the process with American candidates, are you going to be doing validation with like, will your Canadian franchisees be doing validation or is that even legal? I don't even know. So that's something we're, we're working through right now. If possible, we would love for it to happen, but it is, there are some gray areas that the yeah. lawyers are working on around that. Um, I would say that, you know, we, we were acquired uh, about a year ago now by Happy Nest Brands, um, and they are based out of the United States, and they are Launchpad, an amazing group of people, an amazing group of brands. They're kind of our US Launchpad, so we're coming down with this amazing system and this amazing, you know, all, all the packaging around the, the business that we've built and then we have an incredible source of, you know, crazy knowledge with 55 years in Lawn Doctor. And, you know, the, the people that are springboarding us across the United States are just, you know, the best in the business. So it's, it's a really good position. The who dares come first comment is something that we can't wait to see. The, the, the pre-launch interest has already been so much more than I ever dreamed it would be. And I'm, I'm endlessly grateful and flattered that there's so much enthusiasm and it's because people like yourself are are willing to talk to the Canadian who didn't know anybody at the Nashville conference. So. I mean, you're name dropping Brian Adams. It's going to be easy to start a conversation with Kim Daly anyway. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. falls back on the relationship. Well, for those who are listening, you know, happiness brands, you've seen other happiness brands on this podcast. I've had Sharon from Eco Maids on a couple of times. I've placed many a former candidate, now franchisee into their Mosquito Hunters brand. And then of course, Lawn Doctor, just, you know, a pillar in franchise franchising 55 years right. in the franchise industry the founder has been the you know chairman of the IFA the International Franchise Association here in the US so as Chris has said they are no joke in franchising they know how to build solid franchise systems here in the United States and there is proof all over the place so so with that I want to thank you Chris for this incredibly exciting and pioneering but yet so fun and and proven brand that I'm going to get to play with for the rest of 2023. <laughs> and thank you for sharing your story, your passion, your heart here with the followers of Kim Daly. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's It's been a pleasure, uh, you know, from the moment we met to, to this moment here recording this podcast. It's been, uh, you've been nothing but supportive. And I just, I love to tell the story and I just, I love what we're doing. So really looking forward to working with some of your candidates and uh, growing this brand across the United States. Let's put the wheels on the suitcases. <laughs> so for anybody out there who is excited about Sparkle Squad, the most boring business, but with a passion in heart and you are dreaming of saying I was the first franchisee in the United States for Sparkle Squad. I want to meet you like right now. So please follow the email on the screen right now or reach directly out to me at inquire at kimdaily.tv. That's inquire at kimdaily.tv. And until next time, my name is Kim Daly, and I want to be your daily coach. You can find more content just like this on my YouTube channel at kimdaily.tv. And if you're inspired to take the next step to explore franchises matched to you, please email me right now at inquire at kimdaily.tv. That's inquire at kimdaily.tv.